Praveen Chakravarti first because you've written extensively on this and I want to understand from you why do you believe that one nation one poll is not feasible many are saying or supporters are saying this will actually be a pragmatic way to cut costs and it will be a more efficient way of democracy in India. And I challenge both those assumptions. The reason why, I mean, the question is not about whether this is implementable, practical or not. The question is, what is wrong with the current, current system? There is nothing wrong. We're a vibrant democracy. I think I thought we were all very proud that we are a noisy, vibrant, active democracy with elections every year. Too many so, elections. The arg argument against that is too many I elections. Think, Panchayat election, I, municipal election, some election or the other, and that prevents governance. I'll come, to, I'll come to that. So this preventing governance is a complete charade. If there is an election, let's say, in West Bengal, and what has that got to do with preventing development from in my home state of Tamil Nadu? There is nothing. In fact, we, we as Tamilians have no, no reason to worry about whether there's an election happening in Bengal uh, uh, this year or an election happening in Gujarat next year. So this whole thing about development coming to a halt is complete charade. I'll tell you what the real reason is. The real reason is, and I say this as a responsible member of a national party, mm -hmm. it's the two national parties that are impacted because it's the leadership of the two national parties that get engaged in elections in every state and in the as far as the current bjp is concerned it is mr modi and mr ramitra who get in who are both the campaigner chief and election strategist for every election that the bjp fights from the national election to the state election to a municipal local body election but guess what that is the bjp's problem that's not the nation's problem so don't don't conflict the bjp's problem or to be charitable, a national party's problem as a nation's problem. What about Nation costs? What about costs, Mr. Chakravarti? The belief is one nation, one poll will save costs. Let me let me come to that. According to the Niti Aayog report, and to make it very simple, simple uh, 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 numbers are roughly cost about twenty rupees per voter to conduct elections for, as as of today's as as for the system we have today. If we have simultaneous elections, and if, I, if, if I'm very charitable as far as costs are concerned, the Niti Aayog report itself says it will cost 15 rupees per voter. Are we doing all this for five to say five rupees per voter? We could have not built uh, the uh, the new Latins Delhi, uh, whatever that near India today, and that would have saved us more money. So let us not use costs as an alibi. Okay. Now, as far as costs that political parties are indulging in for elections, that is their cost. What is, the, what is the state's problem? There's no, there's nothing about the state. If anything, as an economist, I might argue, actually, it, it, it's beneficial for the economy. It'll, it'll boost consumption. But the real thing, real question that you have to come to, Rajdeep, in today's show is so far, for the last eight years, one nation, one election, what, the reason cited was uh, uh, governance efficiency, costs, and the today's report also says harmony, social harmony, but then there is a new thing added today. They say economic GDP growth will be boosted by 1.5 percentage points due to simultaneous polls. That is the most laughable, that is the most laughable and ludicrous claim that I've ever come across. Okay, let me have Sanju Varma respond. Sanju Varma, you're shaking your head vigorously. <laughs> uh, 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 Praveen Chakravarti is saying, look, it isn't going to save money. Even the Niti Aayog is saying there isn't going to be any major saving by having one uh, election, one uh, one nation, one election. It's a red herring. Okay. Rajdeep, you know, uh, I have to say this, uh, that Britain has a unitary system where the king reigns but does not govern. In United States, you have the president who both reigns and governs. India has a quasi-federal structure where it is the prime minister who through the parliament governs though we have the president who is an important constitutional uh, you know uh, figure uh, in himself or herself since we have a quasi federal structure we are well within our rights to call for one nation one election because a it eases burden on the exchequer b uh, you know you don't have this uh, model code of conduct uh, being uh, applied every three months because as you rightly said kabhi vidhan sabha ka chunao hai to kabhi urban uh, local body ka chunao hai to kabhi uh, you know uh, panchayat raj ka chunao hai third and most importantly i think uh, you know it also uh, 
is very very efficient administratively and i'll tell you what way back in 1983 for the first time the election commission mooted informally the idea of one nation one election it was then endorsed in 1999 by the law commission then it was endorsed subsequently in 2017 by the niti ayog and then in 2018 by the then law commission but most importantly i always say the devil is in the detail have we had the concept of one nation one election so the fact is we had synchronized elections till 1959 it was in 1959 when pandit nehru decided to dismiss the communist party ems nambudri pats government in kerala and we had one nation one election till 1967 so my third point is besides being easy on the state exchequer besides not baining financial resources of the center and respective state governments we've had it in the past and it worked no, wonderfully your point well. was well taken ma'am but the question is that no no one minute ma'am ma ma just a minute no i asked him questions also the question to you is that the fear that the opposition has this is the bjp building up to a presidential system this is india moving towards an executive presidency which is the against the very federal spirit that is the basic structure of our constitution we are a country of subcontinental size don't compare us to britain and in a country like india every state with different political parties deserves a system where each party is respected okay rajneet tell me one thing with your hand on your heart had the bjp or prime minister narendra modi <laughs> Good to see that you still retain your sense of humor, Rajdeep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We always have feisty debates. Yes. You know, tell me honestly speaking, had Prime Minister Narendra Modi or the BJP not mooted the idea of one nation one election, then Congress को कोई आपत्ति नहीं होती. Now, driven by the visceral hatred for anything that Modi says or does not say, anything that PM Modi does or does not do, the Congress is morally bankrupt. पोलिटिकली बैंक एंड लुक एट वॉट जयराम रमेश अरे प्रधानमंत्री तो लोकतंत्र खत्म करना चाहते हैं सो लेट मी टेल यू वेरी क्विकली वेरी क्विकली देर आर फोर इंपॉर्टेंट यू नो आर्टिकल्स दैट वी नीड टू नो आर्टिकल एटी थ्री एंड एटी फाइव विच टॉक अबाउट द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ लोकसभा एंड डिजोल्यूशन ऑफ लोकसभा आर्टिकल वन सेवेंटी टू एंड वन सेवेंटी फोर ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन विच टॉक अबाउट द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ स्टेट असेंबलीज एंड डिजोल्यूशन ऑफ स्टेट असेंबलीज you have the 10th schedule of the constitution which talks about uh, disqualifications uh, you know uh, pertaining yes. to defections but 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 the most important article aap ye dekhiye rajdeep ji chronology samjhiye congress ko article 83 mein vishwas nahi hai 85 mein vishwas nahi hai article 172 mein vishwas nahi hai 174 mein vishwas nahi hai congress ko ek article mein bahut bharpoor vishwas hai which they have used with rabid impunity that is article 356 using that the congress dismissed 143 duly elected governments between 1950 and 2014 and 49 state governments were dismissed by ms indira gandhi between 1966 and 1977 78 alone isliye yahan baithkar bjp ko loktantra khatam ho gaya gadbadi khatam ho gaya you made your point ma'am i i listen to you patiently